All right, how did you do? I hope you really checked those answers on the last question when we wrote transformations of a parent function. Now let's talk about logs. I got it, I got it, I brought, I brought you your log. Not logs, logarithms. Oh, well you could take care of that. Well, it looks like we have some things to learn then. Logarithm. Let's look at this definition. Base b of a positive number x satisfies the definition for b greater than zero, where b isn't equal to one, log base b of x equals y if and only if b to the y equals x. Let's take a closer look at that. Base b here is the base of my exponential. x is the argument of my logarithm, but the answer to my exponential. And then y is the answer to my logarithm, but the exponent in my exponential. Interesting. Let's say we have log uh, base three of nine, and we want to determine what this equals. Well, what are these numbers positions in the exponential form? Well, the base is three right there. And then the Oh, the y would be my answer here, so I don't know what my power would be. And that's equal to what's inside my log, so 9. Well, look at that. I can totally determine this. 3 to what power is 9? Well, 2. So I know the answer to my logarithm is 2, because 3 to the second power is 9. Cool. So a logarithm the power to which a base must be raised to equal a given number. No big deal. That is, the answer to a logarithm is an exponent. So if a log has a base of 10, then we call that a common log. This is the log that our calculators know. So anytime we don't see a base on a log, like if I see log of a thousand, that's really just log base 10 of a thousand. We just don't write the base. So what would the answer to log of a thousand be? 10 to what power is a thousand? Three. So to emphasize a common log, we can just write as log x. We don't need to write the base. If the base is e, well, do you remember e's just the natural base? So we call logs with a base of e a natural log. And we notate these as ln x, natural log of x. Now, really make sure that looks like an L. So you're going to see me do a cursive L N so that you don't think it's an I N. Natural log. I don't know why it's not N L though. Well, I like to say it's more like logarithmic natural. <laughs> well, okay. Why do we care about these logarithms? Because they're inverses of exponential. That's huge. So when we want to solve exponential equations, we'll be able to use logarithms. One other fact we need to know about logarithms is that we can't take the log of a negative number because the domain of a logarithm is zero to infinity, which we're going to see in a second. Okay, so we have an exponential form and a logarithmic form. Without looking above, can you fill in the logarithmic form? So it's log base b, the base goes below, of x equals y. Well, let's figure out what these look like. Let's graph y equals 3 to the x. Making a table, choosing some negatives and positives, let's go with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I plug in negative 2, I get 3 to the negative 2. Well, that's permission to move. 1 divided by 3 squared. Well, that's just 1 ninth. All right, so then 3 to the negative 1 would be 1 divided by 3. 3 to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. And 3 squared is 9. Let's go plot these. As I connect these, it's really clear to see that this is an exponential, right? Starts off kind of flat and then explodes. Exponentials explode. So after that 2, I know the graph's going to just keep growing. What's happening before the negative 2? My graph kind of keeps going and it's just flattening out. Is it going to cross the x-axis into the negative y values? Let's test a value and see. What if I tried to plug in negative 10? So y equals 3 to the negative 10 is going to be, well, permission to move. 1 divided by 3 to the positive 10. Well, if I move further out negative, 1, you know, like 3 to the negative 100, still 1 divided by 3 to the positive 100. So I'm going to stay positive. So since that's graphs flattening out and approaching 0 but never crossing 0, we know that an asymptote forms here. An asymptote forms at the line y equals zero. 
An asymptote is a line that the graph approaches as x or y increases. An asymptote can be a vertical line or it can be a horizontal line, but graphs never ever cross vertical asymptotes and every once in a while they'll cross horizontal asymptotes. Well, let's go find the domain and range then for this graph. If I take my walk across the x-axis, I can see the graph all the way across. So we know all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. What about the range? As I climb up that y-axis, do I see the graph at zero? Well, there's an asymptote there, so we know that the graph isn't there, but just above zero, we're gonna start seeing the graph. So we're gonna say our range is zero to infinity, non-inclusive because of the asymptote at y equals zero. Oh, I'm exhausted from carrying that log in here. Maybe Mrs. Peart can come take the inverse. Time to graph its inverse. Well, what is the inverse of this? Let's see, let's switch the X and the Y and see if we can rewrite it. Well, how am I gonna solve for Y? Well, look up above. Do you see we're in exponential form here? And then we can easily translate that into logarithmic form. So I'll have log base B below. What's my base? Well, it's three, so three goes below log log base b below of x, ooh, but x is, yeah, x is the answer to my exponential, but it's the argument in my logarithm, and that has to equal my exponent, y. So I'm actually going to graph y equals log base three of x as my inverse. Now to graph it, the easiest thing to do, Miss Ryan already went through the trouble of making an xy table for us, so why don't we just switch the x's and y's? So I know we can go ahead and plot these points and sketch the graph, but let's think about something for a moment. We already know these are inverses, so do I need to sketch the graph to know the domain and range, to know the asymptote? No, think about what we know about inverses. The inputs and outputs change. So automatically, I can go ahead and write my domain range, and I want you to think on that asymptote. What is the asymptote gonna be? Miss Ryan told us that the asymptote was our x-axis, and it was this y equals zero. So we have it right there. So what do you think the asymptote for the logarithm is gonna be? Well, we switch the x's and y's. So my guess is our asymptote is gonna be x equals zero. And what's that? Well, then that's just the y axis. Let's go ahead, plot the point, sketch the graph, and see if it looks like that is indeed the asymptote. Okay, being super careful, it looks like that y-axis is the asymptote. So I'll go ahead and put a dashed line on that y-axis just to indicate that I know that there is a vertical asymptote and we can never cross the vertical asymptote. All right, so let's take a look at log base six of x. If we want to graph that and we're not asked to graph the exponential, I'm still going to use an exponential table of values because it's so much easier and then all I have to do is switch x and y. So now I have the values for y equals six raised to the x, my exponential, I know log base six of x is its inverse. All I need to do is switch the x's and y's, the inputs and outputs. Let's test one of these out. So log base six of 36, well, that means six to the what equals 36? Well, six squared equals 36. So yes, obviously using that exponential, flipping the table of values, gives me the table of values for the logarithm, and it works. Now, we were only asked to graph log base six of x, so let's not put both graphs on this coordinate plane. Take a moment and notice some things. Doesn't it look a lot like the graph above? Yes, and we definitely have that asymptote at the same place, at the y-axis. And our domain is going to be zero to infinity again, with the range, all real numbers. Let's see if we can practice switching between logarithmic form and exponential form. This first column, we're starting with three squared. Well, we know that's nine. Can we convert this to logarithmic form? Well, we know that log base three of nine equals two, right? Because three to the second power is nine. Let's try the other direction. Log base four of 16 equals, okay, well, four to what power is 16? Four to what equals 16? Well, squared. So four squared equals 16 is our exponential form. Take the time here to understand, not just memorize. Complete the table. Really 
might take a moment here to check your answers. Looking at number three, we had five to the zero power, which we know is one. When we convert that to a log, we have log base five of one equals zero because five to the zero power is one. So that means log of one is always gonna be zero, right? Any log base. Looking at number five, we had one half to the negative two. Well, when we have a negative exponent like that, we can flip the fraction to change it to a positive exponent. So two over one to the two, well, that's just four. Looking at number nine, when we had that log of a thousand, remember when we don't see that base, it's just a common log. So log base 10 of a thousand, well, 10 to what power is a thousand? Well, you know a quick way to do that is just count your zeros. A thousand, that's one, two, three zeros. So 10 to the third is gonna be a thousand. Looking at the last one, we have log base 12 of 12. Well, 12 to what power is 12? One, time to evaluate logarithms. And we wanna be really comfortable with logarithms. Sometimes we can kinda of just do them in my head, but other times, absolutely not okay. You have to show your thinking. Log base three of 27 equals three. Well, that one we can totally do in our head. But look at this next one. Log base 49 equals 343. Guys, we can't do that in our head, but we can do it with our head. Let's go ahead and change it to exponential. So the logarithm will equal the exponent. I'm gonna make that x and rewrite in exponential form. So 49 to the x equals 343. Man, you might be thinking, I'm stumped. <laughs> I don't know a lot about powers of 49, but I do know 49 is the same as seven squared. So let's break it down into something smaller. So seven squared raised to the power X. Now this isn't going to be helpful unless I can rewrite 343 with a common base. The common base we want is seven. Well, if you think back to when we learned all of our factoring techniques, SOAP, we did a lot of our cubes. Seven cubed is 343. So let's use close by multiply. I now have seven raised to the two X equals seven cubed. Whenever we have the same base and these are set equal, we're allowed to then say that means that exponents have to be equal. So now I have a new side problem. Two X equals three. X equals three halves. That means 49 to the three halves equals 343. Let's take a look at number three. So it just says log of 0 0.001, tenths, hundreds, thousands of 1,000. Okay, but log, what's the base? You're right, it's common base, so there's a 10. I encourage you to write that 10 in there, just so you remember. So then 10 to the what equals that 0 0.001, the 1,000th. Remember we want a common base. Well, I like the base 10, so 10 to the X is good, but what's this one over 1,000? Well, a thousand is the same as 10 cubed, right? Count the zeros. So I'd have 10 to the X is equal to one over 10 cubed. Ooh, are those the same base? Mm -mm. But I can make them the same base because we could just take the 10 cubed and move it to the numerator. Do you remember what happens to my exponent? Yeah, it goes negative. So now I have 10 to the X equals 10 to the negative three. The base is the same, Therefore, my exponents are equal and I'm done. So log base 10 of 0 0.001 equals negative three. So basically we're tackling these logarithms by first seeing if they're an in my head problem. And if they're not, then we convert to exponential and try to find common base to figure out the exponent. Looking at four, we've got log base four of two. So four to what power is two? Once we get better at these, we might know that one in our head, but for now, let's go ahead and set it up in exponential. So four to the X equals two. All right, common base. Well, I have a base of two on the right side, so I might as well make this four, two to the two to the X equals two. Well, close by multiply two to the two X equals two. Well, look, I have a common base. We can throw a little one exponent on the other side. Bases are the same, so I can set those exponents equal to each other. Two X equals one. Well, look at that. I get X equals one half. So log base four of two equals one half. Does that make sense? Four to the one half power one half, that's a square root. The square root of four is two, so it does work. Look at number five. We've totally seen one like this. The one right above it, number two. Give it a shot. Did you get three fourths for five? When I first started this one, I had that 16 to the X and I really wanted to change 16 to four squared, right? 
but I couldn't get that common base. I couldn't make eight four to some power. So I went with two instead, 16, two to the fourth, and then eight is two to the third. Six is also similar. Go try that one. Check six. Are you kind of picking up on the strategy here? It's almost helpful to start with that smaller number first when you're trying to figure out common base. So 25 we knew was five squared. So then I tried to force 125 to look like five to some power. Try number seven. <laughs> Did I get you on that one? Log of a negative number. We can't do that. Does not exist. The domain of a log is zero to infinity, not inclusive. Looking at eight, I have a fraction as my base. Let's change it to exponential. Changing eight to base one half, yuck. Let's change one half to base two. I know that this two in the denominator is just to the one power, so why don't I move that to the numerator, making it negative, so it looks like our common base is gonna be two. So let's change eight to two to the third power. Now we have those common bases, setting those exponents equal to each other. It's looking like x is gonna be negative three. Interesting, so when we had the base as a fraction, we ended up getting a negative answer. How about you try this last one? Test that knowledge. We get x equals negative one, woo! So what have we learned about logs? Well, that they're not wooden stumps in math class, they're inverses of exponentials. True. But you know what? If we're ever stumped, <laughs> we can use a log. <laughs>